Shane McCuller reporting live from the kitchen. Uh, we've got we've got a story here. So you're walking down Washington Street, uh, hopefully not around uh, 2 to 3 p.m. today, but uh, maybe a little bit later, maybe around 8, 9 o'clock, uh, and you're thinking, it would be great. It's a little chilly outside if I could have some bubble tea. And so you go down, you're, you're coming up to the one of the hot spots there. You've got uh, Kung Fu Tea there, and you got opposite uh, Gong Cha. Um, I think there's another establishment a little bit further down. I mean, you, you've certainly got... Um, uh, Vivi uh, down closer to the Shake Shack area down by City Hall, uh, but in that in that vicinity you have two, and that was kind of also the hot spot when Koboken had a. I don't know if we did a cupcake phase, but we definitely had falafels. Uh, there was one point where there was Ibby's, Amma Moons, and maybe a third place starting up, and so the the great falafel wars, uh, and then previously maybe there were some cupcake wars. I'm not sure. Um, but that being said, uh, so these two bubble tea places remain, and you're going to Kung Fu Tea, and you're going to ask um, for a uh, Jenju Nai Cha Dabe Ruba. Uh, you'd like a hot one. Um, maybe you'll do sanpen, uh, sanpen, you don't want to get too much sugar on that. Uh, and you can take home, that'd be great for an evening. And, and they tell you, you know, it's, we're actually not doing hot drinks right now. And it is, it's fair. They're probably closing about a half hour, 45 minutes. They want to wind down the operations. Uh, so it's, a, it's about, I would say 9, 10 PM. And so you're understanding about this. So you, you go in anyway and you, you pivot and you say, what do I like? Um, how about we just do Dongwon Night Shot, which is a winter melon green tea. Uh, and I did say Night Shot, but I think that was overlooked. So I actually ended up getting, uh, just a winter melon green tea. Um, and Chu Bing, less ice, uh, it was a large, so I do have a lot to work with here, and, uh, and it does have bubbles. Now I'm thinking there's got to be ways to work with this stuff, and uh, I just see, I'm not one to settle, so they said no hot drinks. We'll see about that. So I'm taking this back, and I'm thinking, you know, I can work with this, um, I hope I didn't get anything with the sleeve there, uh, I could work with this winter melon green tea, and uh, we can maybe still make uh, Dongwa Nai Cha, Ruda Dabe. Uh, and so what we got going here is, I said you'd prep me with I like the saucepan and the cocktail kit. And we've got some other things going on here. I want to shout out to uh, Suman. Uh, gave us these a long time ago. Great history with her going back and forth on IKEA furniture and all sorts of things. We've got some, some desks right now, actually, from her. Uh, wishing her well in the New York State. Um, what we've got here is uh, a cocktail kit. And it doesn't get a lot of use today, if i got to be honest, these days. Um, and we also have... Uh, a lot of people have cocktail mats, and you know, I don't, that's probably left over from dinner, and you're going to find out why. Uh, we don't have cocktail mats, I never got into that. Uh, I think Gocek might have one. Uh, Yuri certainly, I don't know if we've ever had to use it though, because we had that kind of, but today's about showmanship, so we're going to go with it. Uh, so this is, uh, Anna eats most of her meals on this uh, so far, and this is kind of the, the next logical step as we move past the high chair with the integrated apparatus, which Andy and Howard will, will probably be coming up to that phase shortly, so I wish you well. Uh, so we've got this, and it is basically a silicone mat. This is Mushy brand. It's got some nice little cherries on here. Maybe these are cocktail cherries tonight. You know, I've never looked at it that way. Uh, but we're, this is going to be our workspace here. So join me uh, for an exciting affair. We're going to crack open this Kung Fu milk tea. And they don't usually expect you to open it this way. So kudos to Kung Fu for making this worthwhile. Or not worthwhile, but rather just possible. And I'm going to carefully, I think I'm just going to take off the whole thing. We don't want this coming in while we're doing the drink, and we'll clean that up later. There's already a banana thing. See, I usually like to empty the inside of the kitchen out into this little, shout out to the oxygen compost bin. We've got some old tofu in there, and I'm kind of ashamed. Um, but at least you're not throwing away meat. And uh, so we've got this um, compost bin going there. And we've, uh, so I try and keep the sink drain clear just with the food, eggshells, that kind of thing, when it gets in there, and there's just puffing in here. So now I gotta kind of sort through that and see what's going on. Um, anyway, so we're gonna pour this in, and I'd like to sort out, there's some ice in here that's probably melted, and that's okay. Um, what I'm really after now is the, um, the, the bubbles on the bottom, and I'll tell you why. So we're just gonna strain this, and hopefully, eight ounces, I'm gonna realize eight ounces is not enough because I had to get the dot. What am I thinking here, Jeremy? See, we could have cut this, if I had a stage manager on duty right now, we would have cut this, but you know, because of the whole writer's strike, it's really hard to find talent these days. Uh, I mean, they're there and they're sitting by the sidelines, but just nobody wants to pay them. I mean, but I wanna pay these people. So like, if you can help me make this better and I wouldn't have run into this problem, then I, let's, give me a call. Have your people call me. Whoa, that's, that's quite a bit. Uh, Way saying, what are you doing? Is this like an odd job um, that I can hire you to do? Because I, I feel, you've got such a talent such a talent for creativity and for a sense of design and, uh, and attention to detail. And that would be really, really lovely. Okay, so maybe I'll say this, this is uh, we're doing Pikmin now. Uh, I think last year I had a, a um, Kirby. It was like a pink drink. It, it, I mean, don't get, if that's what you want, like the, the bang energy drinks. Uh, but by the way, <laughs> this has been hanging out. I forgot to put this out on the party, but this is for Loco. Uh, this is the original recipe. Uh, this is, so this is at least 10 years old. Miraculously, it has not popped yet. The can is in excellent condition. These fetch a pretty penny on eBay, but I, I don't think I'm going to go that route. Um, instead, I'm just, this is just going to be a keepsake. Uh, and maybe one day we'll do this an episode that's certainly not tonight. Nobody's trying to get killed in the hospital tonight. Okay, so we've got the bubbles here, and we're going to bring this up with some lovely stainless steel 
uh, uh, Cynthia's mother got us three of these, and these are from Taiwan. These are, uh, it says, Perfect Stainless Steel 316. And uh, I can't read the characters right now, so you know this is all an act, and I don't actually know how to speak any bit of Mandarin. Uh, but we're just going to dump these right into here. And we tried to find more of these. We have three, which is good, a good number of three. Um, you know, triples is good, as they say. In uh, what was that show with, uh, it had the Better Call Saul guy, and he was opposite of the, uh, I think you should read now. Uh, I'm not sure if it was season one or two, but there's a lot of gems in that. Uh, so triples is safe. We've got the bubbles off to the side here, and now we're just going to combine this because it should have been in the two cup to begin with. And sometimes when you pour it with Pyrex containers, sometimes it leaks down. I don't know why that is. It doesn't have to do with the substance. Maybe it's the confidence in which I'm pouring. I'll put that right over there. Uh, okay, we're going to go with these two. And uh, do I actually need the cocktail shakers? No, this this was maybe just for some look pretty in the background. What we really were after was this. Uh, we're, we're not going to need, we're not doing any measurements here. We've had a lovely, from the R&D bar in Taipei, I can share that they don't exist anymore, but we found uh, another place that was just down the street from Music Vibe Lounge, uh, and I believe it's called Silver Lining, and it's a lot of the same talent there. They made originally a, a Jenju Nightshot, a bubble tea cocktail, and I believe it had some rum in it, and uh, uh, tried to recreate this at home. They were actually very forthgoing with the recipe. I think I made this for either Jen or Vivian um, with Cynthia, and we had, a, we had a great night that. I would like to go back and kind of analyze that recipe and revisit that, because that, that's a creative flavor there. Uh, we're going to pour this right into, we're going to jump right over here, and we've got stage two set up here. And just line this up and usually you know we have they can be really appreciate that i need some time to uh to sketch out and just uh sort out my missing tripod because i just need something that's not going to break that's all i need right now uh, so we're going to pour this into the stove and this is the the all flat i got this this was a little dinged up but i can't tell you where they have the outlet sales and uh, this is one of our workhorses in the kitchen here this is the all clad uh round bottom uh Shout out to the round bottom. I, I don't know. It's it's a round bottom. So there's some towels that are good for the screen and some towels that are good for cleaning up the messes. If you know what I mean? I'm not, this is a clashing pattern, but it is very good for drying my hands. But this is a little bit more showmanship. Uh, so we're gonna go here, we're gonna turn on the heat just a bit, and we're gonna bring this up the temperature here. And you don't wanna this is okay to boil. See the magic of this, I was thinking originally if we uh, do we heat up the milk with it, and I'm thinking we're gonna use the milk as a cooling agent here. So we're gonna bring the bubble tea, uh, sorry, the well, the, the drained bubble tea itself up to a good temperature. Um, and then where is the temperature thermometer? Okay, that is right here. Uh, so we've got a thermopen, mark something or other. Uh, and this is pretty good. This comes with magnets in the case, so it kind of sticks. You can stick it to, not that I would stick it to there. Our refrigerator doesn't really stick to because the, the front of the door is not even a magnet anymore. But we actually like to put it up on a spice rack, so that's pretty cool. And I guess it could go up. No, really, it'll stick to the pan maybe? Yeah, it does stick to here. So I guess that's pretty cool yeah, if you really need that kind of action. Um, so we're going to see what temperature it gets up to. I don't want to do this to a boiling point. Um, I think that would just give us, just overshoot it. So right now we're at 74, 75. So we're just going to bring this up and maybe we'll do the... Um, we're gonna do the power burn in the back. This is the, uh, the Bosch, can't tell you what the oven is. Uh, there was some trouble with the door, the front door, anyone from 501 Adams knows what I'm talking about with these original, uh, these original Bosch ovens. Uh, you kinda got, I, I saw something where you take some towels and you kinda jam it in there, but short of replacing the whole door apparatus was just like, is that what you're gonna put $400 in this? Kudos, shout out to Yuri with our Bosch washer, uh, found a way to just uh, fix some of the motor wiring underneath and it was giving us just a new lease of life on this thing. Uh, and I'm glad we didn't have to replace the dishwasher because it's, it's a pretty good model. Okay, so this is coming up. Uh, we're on the power burner here, and uh, let me see what we're at. We were previously, now we're at 92. We're making good headway here. We just gained about 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Can't translate that on the fly there for Celsius, but I am trying to make an effort to use Celsius for my regular weather uh, reporting, which uh, in the beginning was basically, I have no idea what weather it is, uh, and I might go outside and need a jacket. Um, not realize, but now I kind of know, like, is this jacket weather, is this, is this one, uh, and then the, the rain obviously is the same in Celsius and Fahrenheit. Okay, this is coming up. I, I reckon it's probably over 100 now. Uh, are we gonna do a little stir? Um, there is going to be a spoon involved, and but I don't know if I want to use that Willy Wonka swivel spoon. That might be too much. Uh, maybe we have a long... Here it is. Um, so we've got the standard, these are the standard Ikeas, uh, and this is what we use for a lot of things. I want to say like uh, make some dips in those lovely steel bowls that you just saw. I might use this for oatmeal in the morning, uh, my pan. Uh, and as well as a uh, little yogurt snacks that works right there. But we have basically kind of the same thing, and this is not Ikea, this is a different brand. Oh, is it Ikea? It is Ikea, so I can get more of these? Oh, that's lovely. This is Ikea 221.85, and what is this? Ikea 224.22, so if they still make this, then we could just, that's lovely. We've standardized the whole procedure here. Okay, uh, so anyway, this is a great spoon, and let's put it over there, and we're just gonna give it a little stir. And ultimately, it's going to come down to taste because I can't, I don't do this often enough to know that, yes, it has to be at that temperature. All right, it's about 144. Uh, we're going to cap it here uh, and just give it a taste and see if it is at the right temperature. I know it's going to taste good. I want to see also the sweetness. 
that's a good temperature. And we're going to dilute this with some milk. And so now we're going to use the milk as a uh, cooling agent here. So it is going to raise, uh, lower the temperature slightly, sorry, and take out these silicon mats here. What we recently got, by the way, is uh, these little things to cover the gaps in between. Um, and we can only use it on one side based on how the, uh, the stove was positioned. But it is a pretty cool uh, apparatus. And um, I, it, was, it was cheap. I think it was like two of them for under 10 bucks. Uh, so that's a good quality of life improvement uh, if you're in one of these kitchens here. Uh, so we're gonna go up to the milk and we're just gonna take it for, and what I probably should have done, maybe I can't microwave it, but I did wanna put the, I wanted to put that in a hot water bath. Uh, so that really would've been something. So maybe I'll just do that off stage. Let's get some hot water in here and dispense. So this is good to have hot water on the van. Uh, you wanna have the Zojirishu uh, thermos. And that's going to be a little bit, we'll just heat up uh, some of these guys on the side. Okay, great. Okay, so we're back. We're going to add some milk here, and we'll just watch the temperature and the sweetness. I'm not too worried. This is going to be a little less sweet. Uh, it was already uh, less sugar, um, so I'm not going to add too much milk. I do just want to bring that up, and we still have some residual heat in the pan, so I might not even need to add uh, more heat here. Uh, we're just going to stir this in and see what it equalizes at. And also, we'll check it for flavor and sweetness. Um, so that I can do right now because temperature is not factor there. That is a good sweetness, that is a comforting, uh, the sweetness still shines and it does have a good run of milk there. And the temperature here, what we're ending up with is about 135, 130, so we've lost about 10 Fahrenheit there. I think that's fine, perfectly acceptable. Uh, now what you're other gonna do, when you're doing cocktail glasses, you're, you're typically, um, at the nice places, you'll have good ice. Uh, it doesn't have to be clear, that doesn't affect the flavor, it just shows the attention to detail put into it. Uh, but definitely large cubes, you don't wanna have like chipped ice in the wrong kind of drink, you wanna control that dilution. Uh, so this is good, but when you're putting this on a cocktail glass, and people that drink even just beer might know, like it's nice to have a chilled glass every night and then a frosty mug. Um, so they typically would do that in the bureau uh, with urine, we would keep a couple of cocktail glasses, uh, as well as a Ziploc bag, you wanna keep the smells out of large ice cubes, and we had that at all times. Uh, and here, we're just gonna bring this over, I'm gonna pour it back into the Pyrex, that it might be a mistake actually. So what I'm actually gonna do is because now I've added milk here, so I caught myself, and uh, that's fun because you were here for the ride, you could have seen that big mistake. And if this was uh, perhaps a, a jackass variant of the show, uh, you would have seen me pouring that in and make a complete mess of myself. But we're gonna bring this back over and put it on the silicon mat, and I'm gonna shovel this back over, over to here, and we're, we're at 12 minutes already. So this is, this is really coming along. This might have to be its own post, not just a following up. Uh, so we're here now, and uh, we, oh, that's what I didn't do. So we're gonna turn this around, and we were, astute observations may know, that we had some things in the oven at 175, and these are, oh, these are toasty, actually. This is actually quite nice. Uh, so this was on the whole time. I almost forgot about these. We got a vintage MongoDB SV 2011 that was before I got hired. Uh, was able to go, and it really shows because that mug, the printing is just excellent. I'm talking about Mongo swag. I didn't know we were going to do Mongo swag in this episode, but uh, really, whoever our mug supplier was in uh, for Mongo SV 2011, that company, going places. Or if it should, it should have at least a five star rating on Google Maps for mugs. And if you need T-shirts, uh, possibly custom make. Again, as I said, they are in Washington now, and we don't get any kickbacks from that sponsorship. Uh, it's not even a sponsorship, really. So I'm just going to move these over. These are a little hot. I'm not going to lie to you. Those are pretty, pretty spicy. So we're going to turn it around right here and move those over. And we will bring those over to here. Keep this here. And let's get these guys right here. Very nice. Oh, we do have some. This is like Golden Boy and Seinfeld. We do have some fading on the other side there that just is MongoDB. But the SV side is going strong. So maybe that, but I mean, if you didn't use it, if you still got an old vintage MongoDB shirt in a bag, I do have one, and I have some, like, I don't need it right now, so it is on standby. Uh, but I use this every day, and I love using this. And this, this cup deserves to be used. Okay, so we're going to put in these, uh, these old night shop bags here. I've been soaking in some hot water, uh, which actually I didn't call attention to. Just kind of filled it up and just dropped it in, made a little hot water bath. I'm just going to give these a stir, and now we can use a long spoon for this. And uh, this, if you want to bring these up to temperature and you can do the hot water uh, directly, I would add some sugar syrup, add some syrup, because you don't want to have a natural syrup to them. They've been sitting before you add it to the drink. And a little chilly, but they're going to get warmed up nicely with these drinks. Okay, so now, I'm going to switch over to the Old Faithful spoon. I'm just going to lay a little bit of this in. And you don't have to use all of it. You can customize it to your taste. Um, some people find there's just too many bubbles in bubble tea sometimes. Cynthia likes a little bit more. So I'm going to give her the SD mug tonight. I'll just save some on standby. Uh, and now we're just going to ladle in, ladle in the hot uh, winter melon green tea. Uh, winter melon is uh, nor uh, winter literally winter melon. Dong tian is winter, and uh, melon is gua shi gua. Western melon that's watermelon. Uh, many different types of melon. There's ku gua is uh, bitter melon. Uh, I'm not a fan of that, but I've had it in one or two recipes. So I would say if you can cook bitter melon and I would like it, then I would probably trust your cooking in other areas. Um, so shout out if anyone wants to 
uh, put me through the ringer and or test their cooking skill. Uh, maybe that's not to be a fun game for you. I would look forward to anything you might try to do with winter melon. Maybe even a winter. Oh, sorry, not winter. Winter melon is too easy. Easy sauce. Everyone could do winter melon well. Uh, I'm doing it here right now. Um, but if you're doing with bitter melon, if you could do bitter melon in a cool drink or a cool. Um, just a dish where I can get over the bitterness to it. I'd be interested there, and a little bit, of, a little bit over the edge there. We will have some. I'll save a little bit in, just like the milkshakes uh, when you get them at the old-fashioned diners. And uh, let's just get a, a wet towel here. Do we do? We have these. Oh, these Swedish. Uh, Cindy got these. These are pretty hard, and I'm going to get this into. You can put these in the dishwasher or just the washer themselves. They're kind of like shop towels, and but they work great for napkins. Uh, they clean up easily and they're very absorbent, um, very eco-friendly as well. Uh, you're not going to be throwing these out uh, anytime soon, and uh, they're good in a pinch. There we go. So clean that up right there. Uh, I'm going to bring this in, and we've got a little serving tray. I love the Nordic ware. Uh, of course, the hands. You got the halves and quarters. Uh, if you're doing them, not for this episode, but definitely get these little trays for cooling cookies and stuff like that. That's great. Closing that up, and we're going to bring this into the other room and sit down and have a lovely episode of How To with John Wilson. And uh, it's date night. It's date night here on Saturday night, reporting live from the kitchen. God bless everybody. Bye-bye.